something is clearly up in all the monarchies across Europe, and only the last couple of years, in Norway, in Denmark, and in Spain as well, members of the kings and queens' families have been losing titles left and right, and also royal privileges too. For example, in 2019, King Carl XVI Gustav of Sweden announced that he was removing five of his grandkids from the royal house, and then in September of 2022, Queen Margrethe of Denmark set a cat amongst the pigeons, announcing that she was stripping all the titles of her four grandkids from her younger son, Prince Joachim. And then in November of last year, it was Norway's Princess Merta Louise's turn. It was revealed that she was no longer going to be representing the royal house. A pretty clear line was drawn by King Harald. While his daughter was able to keep her title, she certainly couldn't use it in conjunction with any commercial ventures that she and her fiancé, Durek Verret, might cook up from their new California abode. I do wonder how many European royals who are able to trace their lineage all the way back to Queen Victoria are wandering around Santa Monica Whole Foods right now. There is one clear thing that unites all the people affected by this title pruning. They are all spares, or they're the children of spares. Now, the most obvious question we need to answer is, how much longer can Harry and his wife hold on to their titles, especially considering the coronation decision? Of course, I'm referring to the news this week that while Prince Harry is planning to come to the coronation, Meghan's going to be staying at their home in Montecito, California, supposedly with the kids. It's pretty convenient that their son, Prince Archificial, does turn four on the same day, so that gives Meghan something of an excuse, but it's not a very good excuse. I mean, I do understand, though, why would Meghan want to spend so much money flying over there when she's just going to be ignored by her in-laws? But this decision for Meghan to remain home in California could have serious repercussions, not only when it comes to their Sussex titles, because here is the important thing in this matter. In deciding to not go and to not show her support for her father-in-law, to not be there for probably the biggest moment of the monarchy in the better part of a century, Meghan is making it very clear what her position is in relation to the institution. It looks like Meghan is making it very clear what kind of relationship she wants to have with her husband's family, which is basically none. In spite of the then Prince Charles stepping in to save the day and walk her down the aisle back in 2018, it doesn't seem like Meghan's very excited about returning to support the family. Bottom line is, it seems like Meghan is drawing a line in the sand when it comes to her feelings about the whole Buckingham Palace box and dice. Well, that is her prerogative, nobody can argue with that. But if she is viewed to be turning her back on the monarchy, how much longer can Charles really allow her and Harry to hold on to the biggest gift they got from the monarchy? I mean, talk about quid pro quo. Essentially, with this coronation move, are Meghan and Harry trying to box Charles into a corner when it comes to those titles? Only last weekend, the excerpts from Robert Jobson's new book, Our King, Charles III, were published, and he revealed, the idea of stripping Harry of his royal title has been discussed at the highest level. Of course, it is good news for the Montecito malcontents that apparently Charles is not in favor of this news, but it should ring alarm bells that it doesn't seem like he ruled it out completely or dismissed the idea as ridiculous. Now we have passed the two-year mark since Harry and Meghan did that Oprah Winfrey interview, which, looking back, was them just firing the starting gun on their quest to vent a lot about his family. Now since then, they have said a lot more about the royal family, and maybe their dirt dishing has become a little more polished, but still the message has basically remained the same, that the royal family are a bunch of cold-hearted, self-interested swords who suffer from unconscious bias and are way too close with the British media. Harry and Meghan have made careers out of trashing the royal family, and all the while they are still identifying with that family considering the awesome money-making pulling power of a royal title. So how could the king in good conscience allow them to keep using what was a gift from the sovereign to help sell their wares all around Hollywood when their bread and butter these days is turning out some anti-firm content? It's also worth noting that lately the king has been showing he's got a backbone after all. Within 24 hours of the release of Spare, reportedly, his majesty decided to kick Meghan and Harry out of their UK home, Frogmore Cottage. It was a convenient move, considering that at some point he'd also made the sensible decision of cutting his brother Prince Andrew's allowance, basically evicting him from his large estate royal lodge. He can no longer afford the upkeep. 
Now, these real estate moves do suggest that the king doesn't have any intention of tiptoeing around feelings. It doesn't really seem like he's worried about upsetting the black sheep of the family in his mission to make the royal family seem both an efficient outfit and to also not put up with the shenanigans of those spares. And that could spell trouble for Meghan and Harry if they keep on firing these anti-palace missives. Considering the king's recently acquired taste for pragmatism, what once seemed like an amazing no-coming-back-from move on Charles's part, stepping into strong-arming Meghan and Harry into no longer using their Sussex titles, today doesn't really seem that crazy. The way things are looking now, if the next two years of Sussex media content look anything like what we have seen over the last two years, there could come a day when His Majesty doesn't have any choice really but to do his job and protect the monarchy. So that would mean no more indulging Harry and Meghan. And before you go after me, yes, I know, technically Charles does not have the right to strip Harry of the Sussex title, only Parliament can do such a thing. But I'm guessing there are mechanisms available to him to take action on this matter. He could also allow them to keep the titles, as with Merta Louise, but somehow force them to no longer use them in conjunction with any kind of money-making projects. At this point, I could probably write a novel on the awesome hypocrisy of Harry and Meghan and all this, but you know what, I've got other things to do. What I still cannot accept, though, is how in good conscience they can earn so much money for talking trash about the monarchy while still identifying as members of this institution. The cognitive dissonance is just mind-blowing. But anyway, what we're here to discuss is Charles and how he could approach the Montecito malcontents. Might we see him go down a similar path as King Carl Gustav, Queen Margaret, and King Harold, and decide that some spare title pruning is certainly necessary? When Charles is crowned next month, he's going to be promising to protect the crown and the monarchy. And that could mean that it will be necessary for him to make some calls that as a father, maybe he doesn't want to make. Meanwhile, maybe Harry and Meghan and Merta Louise, Durek and Washington based Joachim, and the maybe moving to LA Princess Eugenie should consider setting up some kind of US support group. They might need it in the future.